Hey guys, what's going on? John Massey with CoastalCryptoMining.com. Um, and this is part two to the L7 series. If you don't know already, uh, Bitmain L7 has finally got firmware supported by Hive or Hive on, Hive OS, whatever you want to say. Uh, I'll put the link to part one someplace over my head. I'll, I'll at least put it in the description down below for you guys uh, to let you, you know, show you how to quickly install that onto your L7s. I wanted to get that video out as soon as possible. I'll do a more in-depth one if you want me to. Um, it's not super complicated to get the L7 firmware from Hive onto your L7s. Um, really, really quick, you know, Belina Etcher, you know, zip file. Use Belina Etcher to put your firmware onto a micro SD. Insert the micro SD into your L7 and you're good to go. But let's go ahead. Let's dive right into uh, part two, which we're going to talk about. Um, the tuning of the machines. We're going to take a look at the new web GUI, and we're also going to take a look at uh, some of the frequencies and wattage compared to the GUI within Hive, your web login, if you are a Hive member and you have your own Hive account. But let's go ahead, let's dive in and see what we got going on. All right, guys. So this L7 uh, is the same one that you guys saw me flash in the first video, or the first part. Uh, this is a 93 100 mega hash or 9.3 giga hash model L7. We know that Bitmain has a wide variety or variants of the L7. Kind of comes down to silicon lottery. But uh, this is what the 3900 looks like. This is what it's going to look like on all the different variants. It's a cleaner look. Um, I like it compared to, say, the firmware that we see for the S19s. Not saying I don't like the S19s. I just, this is really nice to see. This is really clean. It's in your face, it's up front. You got all the information, um, very similar to what we saw with Bitmain's stock firmware. We just have a few extra tabs over on the left here above my head that will help us tune and really unlock the true potential of these L7s. Now, we've talked about the L7s and the different chipsets that uh, come into play in different variants here on our live streams and on our channel in the past. Um, so let's dive into it here, and I'll kind of, as we're talking here, going over some of these different profiles and advanced settings, I'll point out some of the things that we've discovered with the different variants that we've seen across our, our farm here. All right, so before we get there, though, before we get to the profiles and the advanced settings, um, if you have a Hive account and you are familiar with you know, your farm hash, you find that underneath your settings tab, this is where you would place your... Uh, farm hash to link it to your web interface for remote monitoring and access to your uh, machines. I like it. I've always liked Hive's interface for their machines for remote access. It makes things really simple, intuitive, awesome, awesome setup. Also has a little bit of a, a new little feature here with the API server. So if you're not using farm, um, Farm's API or your farm hash with Hive, you can use other ones. Uh, let's dive into your settings. This is where you find your settings for your pool information, depending on what pool you're using. Currently, we're using Poolin for a lot of our LTC and Doge miners, our script miners at the Coastal Crypto Farm. Here, we're going to find our IP settings. Right now, this one is just set to uh, DHCP. It just pulled a random IP from our router and our network just to get it plugged in and ready to go. Typically what we do for a machine that is going to be spending a lot of shelf time in our facility, we'll actually static IP our machines just for a little bit you know, more secure network connectivity and make sure that we don't have any issues um, across different machines you know, coming up with different random IP addresses because we run a pretty big network. Uh, but let's keep diving into this a little bit um, closer. Before I hit advanced settings, though, I am going to take a look at the profiles. So this is where you're going to find a lot of the auto-tuned profiles for Hive. And they've done a pretty good job with stacking them uh, for you guys to really hone in on which setting you want to run. Uh, you'll notice here that in parentheses, uh, we have the wattage limits or the consumption for each power or each tune setting. These are going to vary depending on which variant you have. So right now, again, we said we are running the 9300 or the 9.3 giga hash variant from Bitmain. This tune that we're running, the 10 giga hash tune that we're running, says it should consume about 9.3 or 9300 watts. I'm here to tell you that 
this number's off depending on which model you're running. Right now, we're definitely consuming far less than 9,300. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. But just keep that in the back of your mind as we go through some of these setups before we dive into the web remote access for the L7. So again, pretty awesome stuff. Um, anything past 1,100 watts, 1,100, sorry, 1,100. 1100 or 11.0 giga hash, you're going to need to alter your PSU or get like say an alpha uh, PSU, which we can provide for you guys if you're looking for them or even help guide you through modifying your APW12. Um, but let's go back now to our advanced settings. Now, this is my favorite tab. If you've seen some of my earlier videos when we were talking about like the L3, I really like to manually tune the ASIC machines, uh, just like someone would like to manually tune their, their graphics cards and find the best optimum settings. I love to do that with ASICs. They've done a really great job of making this really simple for everybody to do and to knock out. We have three hash boards. Uh, we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 24 banks is kind of what they've clustered the chipsets into. So we can do a manual tune going up or down frequencies for chip sets of five, or we can use the drop down menu uh, for each chip and we can pick our tune that we want to attempt to run. It's a real simple process to tune these chips individually, and they've made it even simpler with these uh, groupings of five or the chipset banks of five. I think they've done a fantastic job, but that being said, as much as I love to manually tune ASICs and individually tune the chips, the advanced settings and the advanced profiles for the auto tuning, I was knocked it out of the park. These settings are, are amazing. And I'm not just saying that because of what we're seeing in the frequencies and the hash rate that we're seeing uh, and the consumption that we're seeing. But again, we have one of the higher tiered. L7 is running right now. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at the 9.3 giga hash model. These models go all the way down to 8.8 .8, um, giga hash models and in, bet in between. So the wattage consumption or the, the power consumption for these machines are going to vary depending on your chipset. They've created tunes. So this, this firmware will run on any variant, right? These tunes will run on any variant, which is amazing. And they really, you know, the amount of effort and time that went into coding these firmwares for us, that uh, these auto-tune setups have come so far in the past couple of years with these ASIC machines, it's unbelievable. Love what they've done. I, I can't talk you know, any higher about Hive than I already do. Hive is amazing to the point where we've decided to you know, take our relationship with Hive to the next level with um, our, our own branded firmware. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the remote access for that same L7. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, Hive, it's so clean. Everything is right here. You have your commands at the top. So you can set your flight sheets, um, you know, set a watchdog if you want, power the machine off, put it in sleep mode, and you can even tune it here as well. So we can go over to tuning and we can set our individual uh, tunes and overclocks for this machine again there's the you know 10 giga hash at 3900 watts and so on and we have additional settings here um, applied and so on so let's go back to overview again we can see all the chips are up and running we can see we're having a few hardware errors but that's because the machine has been tuning and it's trying to dial itself in that takes a little bit of time to really hone in when you're starting to tune a new machine so don't be nervous if your hardware errors start climbing rapidly it happens while you're tuning um, we can see the individual frequencies or the best frequency that Hive has found for those individual boards. They may not always line up like this machine is. Uh, you may see 1925, 1950, 1975. They may vary. It's going to find the best frequency for your machine. Uh, we can see the consumption for each board, which what the consumption is for each board is pulled. Now, if you're quick on math, you have already done the math and you know that uh, we're a little bit below that 3,900 watts that was uh, seen in the tune settings that we picked. Um, just to kind of, you know, just jump right into it, I guess, we know, and enough with beating around the bush. 
So we're getting 10 giga hash worth of hashing power on average. So it's 10.9, 10.2 giga hash of hashing power at 36, 20, 36, 27 watts or consumes power, which is amazing compared to what they were predicting on their tune settings or their tune profiles. So we're doing about 300 watts less than what they had thought this machine would do or an L machine an L7 machine would do at that tune profile. So a little bit more efficient, a little bit, you know, for, for the hash rate that we're getting. Again, this is going to vary depending on the variant that you have uh, or that you're running. Um, as time goes on, I will do a, a part three for the L7 firmware series. And we're going to go over the different variants. Uh, we have a couple in stock already or at the Coastal Crypto Farm. Um, once we get our own Coastal Crypto firmware from Hive, we'll go ahead and we'll make that video happen. And we can compare the power consumption from the 8800 or the 9050, uh, the 9300, the 9500, whatever it may be. We'll take a look at the power consumption across all the different variants and we'll take a look at the, you know, make sure that they all have the same hashing rate as well. So we'll be able to kind of break everything down and see what kind of efficiencies we can get. But again, I think Hive has done a fantastic job on this firmware. I hope this kind of gives you guys a rundown on what to expect for the L7 firmware. Uh, I'm sure tons of videos are going to be coming out in the next couple of days, but make sure that you guys, you join the conversation, no matter what video you're watching, what kind of content you're consuming, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, support your favorite YouTubers. Um, and uh, like I said, again, join the conversation. You know, we are, we're here to talk about our journey at Coastal Crypto and what we're doing and kind of, you know, what we've learned along in, uh, along the way. Um, if we don't have the answers, we're not afraid to say we don't know, but we'll go out and find it and we'll, we'll discover the answer together. Uh, so until next time, guys, until we go live, uh, we really hope that uh, this information helps you guys. Again, I'll put all the links in the description down below that are relevant to the L7. Uh, comment as well if you need any additional help. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Discord as well. Uh, and again, guys, appreciate you. Have a good evening.